Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip video. I'm interrupting the Proxmox series for this quick tip because I saw it uh, come up on my LinkedIn feed the other day. Um, but it is a really cool service that is free um, for an API call. So this will be a great practice um, for your PowerShell skills to pull from an API, but is also gonna be extremely useful um, for people in cybersecurity or anyone that's really managing a work environment that needs to do a little bit of research on IP addresses. And that is going to be the IP info light has just been released um, by IP info. Um, so if we open up a web browser and we go to the website ipinfo.io, um, in products, we're going to see the Explore IP Info Lite. Now, this is a completely free, um, there is no limits on um, the amount of API requests, which normally something like this is usually very, very limited. Now, the amount of like the actual results, they're only giving you the seven essential IP attributes, but you're going to see when we actually do the call it's probably going to be enough to just get started and get your feet wet with pulling um, IP attributes or enough to do a basic uh, database for what you need to discover. Where are the IP addresses? Like what's accessing my network? What's accessing my web application or anything like that? This will give you enough data on like, where is it coming from? Who does it belong to? This will be fantastic. Um, so to get Ashley started, you would just click on the get started now, and you're going to go ahead and fill in the first name, last name, your email and a password. And then you would just go ahead and verify that information. So I've already gone ahead and uh, signed up here. So if I just pull up this other browser here, when you sign in, you're going to load in to the IP info dashboard. Um, I'm not going to click on them, but if you do click on IP info light, you will get an example of an API request with your token. And of course, if you click on the API token, you will also get your API token there as well, where you can actually limit what IP address it's coming from. Now to prevent just having my API key out there to possibly be abused and also dox myself by showing what my IP address is through that, I'm just not going to click on them. But do be aware, if you click on your API token, you'll get your token right at the top here. And then you'll also be able to limit where those requests can come from. And you can actually put your, your home IP address or your work IP address, depending on what you're exactly doing with this, um, just to make sure that it doesn't get abused by other people. Even though it is unlimited API requests, um, I don't know what they would do if there's some type of abuse or anything like that. So it's best just to keep your API keys still secure, um, even though it is free and unlimited, just be sure to protect that as best as you can. So we're actually going to go ahead and we're going to get started with just showing you guys how to pull that information. Um, we've done a couple of these at this point now, um, but I figured with this new AP um, IP info light coming out, it would be a very great thing to show again. Um, so I already have my token in a CLI XML file. So if we actually just open this CLI XML file, you're going to notice that I just put the username as API. And then I went ahead and put copy pasted my token in there. Um, so the one thing you're going to want to do is once you get your token, you'll want to go ahead and do token equals get credential. And then you're going to want to go ahead and do a token. You're going to want to pipe that to export CLI XML path. And then you're going to want to feed it the path that you want your CLI XML path to be. Now, I'm not going to actually run this right now because I already have it in there. But all you would do is you would run your get credential. You would put in the user. I would just put in API because you don't actually need a username. And then you would go ahead and paste in your token um, for the password for user API. And then you would just export that to the CLI XML. And then you can actually follow along in this video. If you want more information on the CLI XML, I will post a link in the description. So you can actually go watch one of my previous videos that will explain this a lot more in detail and how to do that exactly. 
Um, but let's actually go ahead and let's get started here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is let's get our token information. So we're going to do token equals import cli XML. And we're going to specify the path here with two double quotes. And we're going to paste the token XML path in there. And then what I like to do is I like to create a variable called IP address. And we're going to put that to just 8.8.8.8. And then our API URI. And we're going to put that as HTTPS colon backslash backslash API dot info dot IO backslash light uh, slash and then we're going to do a variable wrapper here we're going to put in our IP address and then we're going to put in a question mark token equals and then another variable wrapper and here is where we're going to put our token so we're going to do token dot um, we're just going to have to actually load in our token so we can get the dot completion here and we're going to do a get network credential and then open and close parentheses dot password. And that's actually going to pass in the token in clear text. That is how this API is configured. You're going to see it um, on the a IP info light dashboard as well. This is exactly how it's written. And then you can go ahead and do a invoke dash rest method with the URI of API URI here. And we can actually just go ahead and run this entire thing. And um, it does seem to have probably a little typo here. Oh, uh, yep. It is api.ipinfo.io. My apologies. We're going to go ahead and run this. And there it is. So here you will, will actually get um, all the information about the IP address. 8.8.8.8. Uh, so we can see that it belongs to Google. It is from the United States and it's in North America. So that's awesome. So we can do a couple more here. So let's just change this IP address here. We can change that to a um, 9.9.9.9. Uh, which is the quad nine IP address. And then if we just run that here, we will see that it is the quad nine IP address. And that comes from Switzerland in Europe. Um, so you can do a whole bunch there. You can do your own IP address as well to pull that information back. Um, but basically any IP addresses that are coming into your network or coming into your applications, you would be able to validate where they're coming from and filter it based on that. So maybe you want to block people from a specific country, you would easily be able to use this API to kind of detect where they're coming from. Or maybe you want to adjust your site or your application's language based on their region that they're logging in from. So you'd be able to easily pull up what region they're coming from and then adjust the language based on that, or maybe change some of the colors or anything like that. One of the nice things to do with that I would do in this case as well is make this into a function. So it would just be a little bit more usable. Um, so we can easily do that there. If we just do a function here and then do a get dash IP info and then open and close curly bracket. And then here we can do a commandlet binding, open and close parentheses, and then a Ram open and close parentheses here. And then we could just do IP address here. Um, we don't have to do any like, you could definitely make this very a lot more detailed by putting the parameter mandatory and everything else like that. We're just going to make it as a string here. And then all I would do is go ahead and copy paste cut all of this, paste that in here. We can just remove the IP address, of course, because we're going to be taking that in from the parameter. And now we have our command here, our function. So here we could actually now just do get 
IP info and we just pass it an IP address. Let's do all ones here. And if we go ahead and we run this, we will see that we can easily pull that back. We can see that the quad one is from Cloudflare and that is in Australia in the continent of Oceania. Um, Oceania. I'm pretty sure I probably really massacred that name. Um, but that is how I would probably do it, especially in PowerShell, create a little function so you can definitely use it a lot more often that way. And then you can just easily uh, do as many requests as you really want. So now we can just do a one on the 4.4.8.8, which comes from the level three parent, and that is in United States in North America. So that is something new that I just saw, and I figured I would want to share with the community here because that is a very, very useful API that is free to use. Like I said, I just saw it come up on my LinkedIn feed the other day. Um, so I wanted to share that out. I know we're in the middle of the Proxmox series, but there will be more Proxmox videos coming next week. I just figured that this was also very, very useful for the cybersecurity community in general, for the PowerShell community to practice with your APIs. And then just generally, it is a pretty cool API, especially that it is free and unlimited API requests. So you can get a lot of practice in with um, retrieving information from APIs. If you have any comments or suggestions on what you would like to see on the channel, please let me know in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.